Now I want to talk about rounding. Um, rounding is done with two functions available to us in Dimension Driven Design. They're actually not documented. If I go into the contents here and go to the section on Dimension Driven Cells, and we go down here to our operators. We won't find ceiling or floor in here. However, if I type in ceiling, go to variables and equations here, you see in the feature modeling guide, which is a step up from dimension driven design, if we go down here we can see ceiling, floor and fabs, which is absolute value, are all available and they can be used in dimension driven design as well. Okay, so let's have a look at how rounding is done. I have an example set up here, and this is my value here, value equals 71.47, etc. So we can use the, um, the ceiling and floor to round up or to round down to the nearest whole number. If I modify that value there, say it's a 71.47 now, so rounding up is 72 and rounding down is 71. And as you can see, as I change the value, the rounding result changes. And it's as simple as that. Type in CEIL, open brackets, type in the value, the value parameter, and close the brackets, and we get that result. Now we don't have um, normal rounding available to us, so if we want to round to a whole number as in normal rounding, we simply take the floor and add half the rounding value or the ceiling and take away half the rounding value. So in this case, I'm rounding to a whole number. I want to add 0 0.5, and I get my result here is 71.47. And if I modify that up, say if I was going to have 71.57, you can see the result now rounds up to 72. And we can take that on a little bit further again and we can round to the nearest 5 or round to decimals. I can round to the nearest um, multiple, I should say, not 5. That can be any number you want. So in order to do this, we divide, take the value and divide it by 5. Let's just type this out. Take the value and divide that by 5. and we, we should get the floor of this. Then we multiply the complete solution by five again to round to the nearest value. Plus we need to add half the rounding value. So half of five is 2.5. And that would be the result. And one thing you might notice here, I've switched from the word processor to the to the dialog box text. When you're working with um, equations in, in dimension driven design, it's far, far safer to use the dialog box because the the word processor, let's just go to that, workspace preferences, text, and we have a few options here on how text editor. If we use the word processor, sometimes there can be um, errors and equations won't work if we use a pr word processor so it's safer to use the dialog box when working with equations. So I'm just going to leave those examples there, I'm not going to go any further than them because that's um, that's really math stuff and I'm not much of a mathematician. So let's do a practical example here. I've got this solution set up and this is just our basic symmetrical rectangle. Let's say it's a, a steel plate I want to put um I want to put a fillet on all the corners. Now one thing I'm going to do here is I'm gonna make these fillets tangential 
to both the sides of the rectangle and to the <coughs> ellipse that's in there. And that hasn't worked properly. Let's try that again. Something going wrong there. Just give it a bit of help. Sometimes with it, it can a little bit of help can work. That's better. Now the reason I'm doing this is because if you watch as I adjust the width and the height, it mightn't be too apparent. Bit a bit better there in the height. <coughs> I like the way that new circle that has the tangents on it adjusts kind of proportionally to the overall size of the part. It's just um it's just aesthetics and this it's purely for this example that I'm, I'm doing this but if we take a radius off that circle I'll declare a variable first call this tan radius rad 